Let me introduce you to a man by the name of Marshall McLuhan, aka the metaphysician of media. In his groundbreaking book published in 1964 called Understanding Media, The Extensions of Man, this professor of literature coined the phrase, the medium is the message. The meaning behind this phrase is that the type of media, be it books, radio, television, etc., is more important than the content the media is communicating. Three years later, McLuhan had another book published called The Medium is the Massage. Now, this was originally a typo from the original phrase, the medium is the message. But McLuhan had kept The Medium is the Massage as the title as he considered it to be more accurate than the original quote. And I shall concur. The typo turned the original statement into one that was more correct. Yes, the TV and the TV show are not the same thing, but the TV as a medium massages the message and the experience of the TV show you are watching in a different way that, say, having the same information communicated to you via a newspaper does not. This idea emphasizes how the medium transformed humans. These mediums are not neutral highways for information, but rather shape the information, or more accurately, our perception and use of the information. McLuhan also spoke of a, quote, global village. While books promoted privacy in the individual, television and mass media would produce a global village and an emerging monoculture. In other words, we share too much about each other to be strangers with each other. A whirlpool of information all at once. Space vanished, sort of. No longer influenced primarily by your family and neighbors, one is now influenced by those in far-off locations. A global village is a globe, or a village, I should say, of harmony, camaraderie, and mutual respect. <laughs> No, just kidding. A global village is not a world of harmony, but a world of constant feedback from others, much of which is really just feces flinging. After all, your typical village is not a place where everyone necessarily gets along, it's oftentimes a place of conflict, insults, and rumor spreading. But this time, it's on a global level. At the time, McLuhan was primarily interested in the primary form of electronic communication of the mid-20th century, the television. Funny enough, he was mostly writing about the television to sell books. The books he wrote were quite controversial at the time, as he claimed that the content and the messaging had a minimal effect on society compared to the method of mass communication. I do believe he is a popularizer. I do believe in five years we will look back at this book and perhaps shrug our shows. I don't think it's uh, a long or lasting influence. Well, critics of McLuhan, I know you're for the most part all dead or in your retirement home, but you guys were for the most part wrong. As McLuhan ended up predicting an obscure form of mass communication you probably haven't heard of. I don't know if you've ever heard of this form of communication, but it's known as the internet. The uh, global village is a world in which uh, you don't necessarily have harmony. You have extreme concern with everybody else's business and much involvement in everybody else's life. It's a sort of Ann Landers column writ large. And uh, it... Uh, doesn't necessarily mean harmony and peace and quiet, but it does mean huge involvement in everybody's else, everybody else's affairs. And so the global village is as big as the planet and as small as uh, the village post office.
you've got mail. Fast forward from the 1960s to the 1990s. The Soviet Union collapsed. And while people didn't know it at the time, during the Cold War, the US military and some European scientists were working on a digital supercommunication mega project. With the Soviet Union in the ashes of history and the Russians too drunk to pose a threat, at least for a while, the internet could now be used for civilian purposes. However, it was still not user friendly. In comes a Brit by the name of Tim Berners-Lee, who produces the World Wide Web, a tool once used by brilliant scientists, engineers, and generals would eventually become so user-friendly that eventually teenagers on TikToks with brains the size of macadamia nuts could use it. Many people dismissed the internet at the time as just a fad, but you know who didn't? David Bowie didn't. I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg. I think the potential of what the internet is going to do to society, both good and bad, is unimaginable. I think we're actually on the cusp of something exhilarating and terrifying. It's just a tool, though, isn't it? No, it's not. No. No, it's an alien life form. What do you think, I mean, when you... Think then about the Is there life life? on Mars? Yes, it's just landed here. Keep in mind that the internet of the 1990s was unidirectional, meaning that anyone surfing the web, as they called it back then, was an observer, not a creator, or even a commentator in the vast majority of cases. Here are the websites for the 1996 presidential election campaigns of Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. They are simplistic and operate as digital pamphlets. No comment section, no share buttons, no memes, no Instagram models with large mammary glands. At the time, most people were still using America Online and surfing the web on specific personal homepages rather than mega platforms. There was also a lot more lagging and stupid pop-ups as well. GeoCities would allow people to publish their own websites starting in 1994 during the Wild West era of the internet. For example, here is the online homepage of Dutch Hound owners welcoming you to Wienerville. And you know Wienerville is heaven given the clouds in the background. This would change with the web 2.0, emerging during the mid 2000s. Higher bandwidth and more widespread use of the internet would lead to engineers, computer scientists, and other autistic gigabrains to create an interactive experience. Unlike books, radio, and television, the mid-2000s internet became an interactive medium, no longer unidirectional. The medium is the massage, and all of those messages massaged by the medium would in turn massage the medium itself. MySpace would emerge as the first major social media website, with tacky wallpaper backgrounds like this pink leopard print that only a MILF escort would think looks good. MySpace also arguably produced the world's first celebrity social media influencer, the intellectual scholar known as Tila Tequila. She became the most friended person on MySpace, with over 1.7 million quote-unquote friends. This would land her record deals and television shows and even a corn vid. She also produced great works of art such as the aptly titled album Set. Today, on the very rare instances she is discussed, it is usually in reference to her flat earth views, love of 1940s Germany, and threatening to baptize her neighbor's children. Ma'am, uh, so I wanted to baptize these children for uh, God's kingdom, and they said yes, but the grandma came over here and told them they cannot be baptized. I have the water ready and everything, and they're really sweet children of God, so I just want to make this testimony. No the artist Andy Warhol said that in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Well, Tila Tequila and countless other talent-deficient influencers after her would prove him right. MySpace was eventually outcompeted by Facebook, which started in 2004 in Harvard but would eventually gain significant traction in 2007 worldwide. For the next 10 years, Facebook 
would be the public square for millennials. Connect with old friends, make new friends, find like-minded people, post dank memes, and make asses of themselves on the internet before the platform was invaded by Gen Xers and Boomers. In 2006, Time Magazine which was originally solely in print form, would proclaim that the person of the year was, well, you. Yeah, you. I'm talking about you, and you, and you, and your spouse, and your dad, and your gardener, and me, etc. Why? Well, an obscure website popped up during the previous year, a website called YouTube. Ever heard of it before? The early days of YouTube would have a large number of high-profile videos that went viral, such as Charlie Bit My Finger and Chocolate Rain. The 144 pixels and vapid content made many skeptical of any significance to the site at the time. However, soon enough, this medium would be used for social, civic, and political change. And hence, we arrive to the logos of this video, the history of online social movements. Before we begin, I want to point out that much of the subject matter will be centered on the Anglosphere, which is composed of the US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the millions upon millions of people in other countries that speak English and have access to Wi-Fi. A global village, if you will. Is this because I'm some evil Anglo-imperialist who wants to subjugate the world? Well, maybe but it's mostly due to the fact that English is not only the lingua franca of the world, but is also the language of pop culture and technology. I'm sure online Tamil-speaking circles have their own interesting stories to tell, but I don't speak Tamil. In this case, without the medium of the language, I can't really understand the message. Nonetheless, I will occasionally be covering high-profile internet social movements outside of the Anglosphere, and the broader Western world, because those are also very important. So pop open a can of Mountain Dew, open up that bag of Doritos, and let's begin to understand how the history of the internet affects the real world, and how the real world affects the internet. The trifecta of the medium, the message, and the global village. Well, to be clear, the actual history is going to start off in my next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and what do you know? I forgot to introduce myself. Anyway, if you stuck around this long, first of all, thank you. And second of all, I'm the Wizard of Wit. I create informative videos, video essays, and mini documentaries on the fascinating world we live in. This is just one part of a 10 part series on the history of internet social movements. So please stay tuned in the future, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.